protein is awesome. Not this, this is protein. But other proteins do astonishing things just to keep you alive. People don't seem to be impressed that I learned how to walk. But for something inside every one of your cells, far too tiny to see, it's kind of insane. This is a kinesin motor protein, and these dedicated workers are completing tasks inside every cell of your body and the body of every other animal and plant on Earth. The way they behave and walk around strikes a lot of people as a little too unbelievable. Across the internet, there is a consistent theme whenever these animations are posted of people questioning the evolutionary process and if this could really be the product of natural selection. We're going to answer a surprisingly common question. Are these proteins evidence that evolution is wrong? Kinesin is about 12,000 times smaller than the width of a human hair, and it walks along microtubules, which are tracks that are found inside of every cell, and they have a polarity like a battery with a positive end and a negative end. Kinesin walk in a single direction only. They only move towards the positive side of the track. Up top, they carry what scientists call cargo in little bubbles known as transport vesicles. There are different types of motor proteins that carry different things, but they are all like little UPS drivers delivering vital supplies across your body. They bring neurochemicals to the synapses in your brain, they deliver melanosomes to change your skin tone, and they're directly responsible for contracting your muscles. They even deliver mitochondria to their destinations. It somehow feels less impressive to call yourself the powerhouse of the cell when you're being carried around like a newborn, but we wouldn't exist without these underpaid and underappreciated laborers. But they aren't always on our side. The rabies virus hijacks these motor proteins to gain entry into nerve cells, and retroviruses such as HIV force them to bring the virus to the center of the cells so that they can take over. Some aggressive bacteria also force this system to bend to their will in order to provide a resting spot for them to set up camp. For good or for evil, our motor protein powers forward like the freight train that it is. Instead of burning coal, it burns ATP for fuel, adenosine triphosphate. It uses one molecule of ATP each time it moves. Using a process called hydrolysis, it breaks off one of the three phosphates, turning the adenosine triphosphate into adenosine diphosphate. By doing this, energy is released, almost like a tiny firecracker popping. This sends the foot forward to take the next step. It's a pretty simple way of moving about, but it works extremely well. They commonly move at 250 steps per second. If kinesin proteins were as big as a regular car, they would be traveling faster than freeway speeds relative to their size. After a while, their cargo gets delivered to its destination, but then we have a problem. Kinesin only moves in one direction, like a walking train with no reverse gear. There there are no loops in the track. Every line comes to a halt at the destination, stranding it with no way to turn around. So what can our kinesin do at this point other than die or fall off of the track plummeting into the abyss? Is that the end of the journey? It turns out not at all. Kinesin are a bit too clever for that. They've mastered a skill that I still struggle with. They ask their friends for some help. Dynein are another type of motor protein. They also walk, but the biggest difference is that while kinesin carries cargo from the outer bounds of the cell towards the center, dynein operates in reverse, moving away from the center of the cell towards the outside. Scientists refer to them as drunken sailors due to their swashbuckling stride. They move along the same microtubules, the tracks. So when our kinesin runs out of track and gets stuck, it simply hitches a ride on the dynein moving in the other direction and problem solved. Kinesin can carry cargo that weighs up to a thousand times more than they do. So to carry heavy cargo, Kinesin has another trick up its sleeve, like mashing a nitrous button. When needed, it can supercharge its ATPase activity to hydrolyze its fuel faster. This process on its own is fascinating to watch. All of this is almost beyond belief. Seeing this eerie walking motion for the first time definitely left me contemplating the raw insanity of life itself. We humans are prone to viewing the world through an anthropocentric lens. We're a bit full of ourselves that way, but it's only natural. If the locomotion of these proteins resembled, say, a worm crawling along a blade of grass, it would still be fascinating, but would it be nearly as mind-boggling? 
I don't think it would. It's eerie because this protein moves like I do, not on four legs like a cat or a dog or most other animals, and maybe that's why a lot of people struggle to believe that this results from evolution. It walks and it carries things, and that makes me feel weird because it's too much like me. Except, it's not really. Smooth animations like these serve their intended purpose. They give a general audience a general idea of how these proteins move. The fact that they walk with two feet and carry things is the main takeaway. This is a simplification by a digital artist. It's not a lifelike recreation by a scientist. Most people want quick, easily digestible content to consume as they scroll through their feed, and this serves that purpose. I kind of hate that it was an embellished version of this discovery that managed to go viral, with a false claim that this is how endorphins are delivered to the brain to produce happiness, which is wrong on many different levels. But the tags on this post did restore my faith in humanity a little bit. It would be perfectly reasonable to look at the smooth, coordinated stride of motor proteins and start questioning reality, but they aren't walking quite like you and I do. In reality, it looks more like this. They don't have eyes to see where they're stepping, they don't have brains to orchestrate their movements, they don't make plans or have intentions, so when a foot is released, it doesn't efficiently move into the next step, it's just sent flailing around randomly until it happens to land in an area where it is naturally held in place triggering the next chemical reaction to occur. And with all of this jerky, unfocused movement, it's difficult to imagine how they manage to take 250 steps per second. Watching the sequence unfold still makes for a pretty convincing impression, but it doesn't quite walk, talk, and act like me. It just might be the next best thing, but it's not quite me. It's easy to get the idea that all of these processes are way more coordinated than they are. Life inside a cell is absolute chaos. Physics at that scale works nothing like it does when you're human size. Everything is tightly packed and bouncing into everything else and moving at blinding speeds. Proteins aren't on a mission. They just get sent bouncing around the cell until they bump into something they interact with or into a chemical that activates some process that sets them in motion. Evolutionary biologist Richard Dawkins said, we are survival machines, robot vehicles blindly programmed to preserve the selfish molecules known as genes. This is a truth which still fills me with astonishment. Motor proteins are a part of this process. Kinesin likely shares a common ancestor with myosin, a different type of motor protein responsible for contracting your muscles. Every time you move, countless myosin are playing tug of war with your muscle fibers, burning ATP for fuel, and allowing you to pick something up or flip off a bad driver. The only thing possibly more amazing than how these proteins function is the process that created them, a never-ending cycle of adaptation driven by the relentless forces of nature, a constant striving towards greater complexity and diversity as each organism carves out its own niche in the world. In the midst of darkness, through struggle and competition, pain and suffering, life ultimately finds a way. The power of natural selection shapes all of nature from expansive ecosystems to the tiniest microorganisms. Neil deGrasse Tyson was pretty direct when he said, the universe is under no obligation to make sense to you, and the good thing about science is that it's true whether or not you believe in it. In a worst case scenario, failing to consider something that doesn't intuitively make sense can have devastating consequences. In the mid-1850s, Joseph Lister finally convinced a group of doctors in the UK to try washing their hands before performing surgery or delivering babies. It sounds painfully obvious today, but the UK scoffed at the idea. Doctors took pride in wearing clothing covered in blood and even in smelling like decay. It was a sign of experience to them. The idea that there is an entire world of unknown microscopic critters crawling all over everything and everyone was just too far out there. Doctors were known to go straight from dissecting a corpse to delivering a baby without so much as rinsing their hands first. Other parts of the world had come around to accepting the germ theory of disease, but countless lives were needlessly lost before society as a whole eventually landed on the same page. And today, nobody gives a second thought to the existence of viruses or bacteria. Whether it makes sense or not, the germ theory of disease is demonstrably true, and so is the theory of evolution, even if the result is sometimes a bit bonkers. I have a sudden urge to go wash my hands.